Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. So it's 2021, Happy New Year, and welcome back. I hope you're all well and staying safe. So if you're new here, my name is Bon and I make videos about my visual art shenanigans. I'm currently focusing more on film photography. However, I also make videos about painting, drawing, and other stuff. So if you're not yet subscribed, please consider doing so to help this channel grow. I would really appreciate it and I make videos every two weeks at the moment. Um, so I have a few ones planned. Um, please stay tuned for them. Anyway, if you've been here before, then you might have seen my review of the Lomography Simple Use Film Camera, which is essentially a disposable camera which you can hack to load new film in. Basically, if you enjoy shooting with disposable film cameras, but want to be a bit more sustainable, then consider buying film cameras such as this one. However, reloading this is still a little bit finicky. I have a video that I will link somewhere over here on how I do it if you're interested. However, if you want something that's maybe a little bit more easier to use, then maybe you should check out Double Film's Show Camera which is the camera that I will be reviewing in this video, so stick around if you want to hear my thoughts about it. If you're unfamiliar with Double Film, it's a small company that sells specialty prefogged or tinted films, which I assume is based in Barcelona, Spain, or at least that's where my orders originate from. Last summer, they released their very own 35mm film camera, the Double Film Show Camera. I got excited about it when I saw their announcement on Instagram, so I went ahead and purchased one for 55 euros or about $85 Canadian. Uh, this video is not sponsored though, I just wanted to share my thoughts about this camera. According to Double Film's website, Show is a fun, affordable 35mm reusable camera with flash, ready to replace the insanity of disposable cameras as well as providing an alternative to overpriced secondhand cameras. While it can use any 35mm color or black and white film, Double Film recommends using 100 or 200 ISO speed for very sunny conditions and 400 ISO and above speed film for normal conditions. Personally, I'd stick to 400 or 800 ISO speed film. Its specs are pretty standard for plastic film cameras. It has a 32mm lens which is a standard wide lens, perfect for everyday shooting from scenes to even portraits. It has a 1 meter minimum focusing distance though, so you won't be able to get too close to your subject. It has a fixed aperture of f8, so don't expect to pronounce bokeh or blurred backgrounds. But its fixed shutter speed of 1 1 25th of a second is fast enough for most scenarios with movement. It comes with a built-in flash powered by one AAA battery, which is useful for low light and indoor situations. Plus, it's very light, about 100 grams, and small enough that it can fit in my jacket pocket. Again, for plastic film cameras, these specs are pretty standard and nothing to write home about, so I'm gonna give it one thumbs up out of two thumbs up. If you're wondering about image quality, I don't really want to look into it too much because, I mean, it is a plastic film camera and so I hope nobody here is expecting it to have a quality of a Carl Zeiss lens. For instance, like all other plastic lenses I've used in the past, it flares very ugly, so try not to take photos in direct sunlight. However, from my experience, it's able to render images that are pretty good. My images are sharp enough for small prints and social media. and the color rendition is great, and any distortion that it may have is barely noticeable. So I will also give it one thumb out of potentially two thumbs up for image quality. However, I would like to note that the image quality of film photos really depends more on the quality of film that you used. 
how it was developed, and how it was scanned. So even if you used a high quality lens to take your photos, if you're only using your phone camera or like a cheap scanner to scan and digitize your images, then you'll definitely take a hit on image quality. As for its price, I will also give it one thumb out of two thumbs because it's a little bit more expensive than other reusable film cameras. I got this for about 85 Canadian dollars plus shipping and tax. Meanwhile, the Lomography Simple Use Film Camera is only $25 plus tax. There are also other reusable film cameras like the Elford Harman camera that has the same specs but only goes for about half its price and comes with free film. However, the show camera is definitely the most pleasing to the eye. Okay, so for me, specs, price, and image quality are not so important when reviewing toy cameras. Which is why so far I've only been giving it a rating of one or two thumbs up. Um, but for these next aspects, I will start rating the camera out of three stars, which means meh, okay, and nice. Because I find that these aspects are what really makes a camera good or bad, and whether I would recommend it to others or not. So for build quality, I will give it two stars out of three. First of all, this camera is beautiful. I love the colors and the little details it has. I'm not gonna lie and say that its appearance didn't make me want to buy it, and I'm sure there are others out there who share the same sentiment as me. It does come in a matte black version though if you prefer that. Aside from its looks, I also really like how the show camera feels on my hands. It's plastic, but it feels premium and solid. It also has a film advance mechanism that sounds very satisfying to turn. A springy shutter button that's nice to press. And a stiff film door lock that prevents you from accidentally opening the film door. That said, the back part of the camera easily scratches, the viewfinder parts attract fingerprints, and the back cover hinges look quite flimsy. I am worried that I will one day break it by just opening it. There are also other parts that feel flimsy, like the winding knob and the battery cover hinges. For ease of use, I will easily give it 3 stars. It's quite literally a point-and-shoot film camera. You just compose then press the shutter button to take a photo, which makes it very easy to use and beginner-friendly. Compared to Lomography Simple Use Film Camera, loading and unloading film into the show camera is much more straightforward. Turning on the flash using its toggle with informative symbols is also more intuitive than other plastic or disposable cameras. Now, being a plastic camera, it doesn't come with a built-in light meter, so it's not easy to check if you're over or underexposed. That being said, all of the other plastic film cameras that I know of don't come with light meters. I mean, they're not really needed if you don't have full control of your settings anyways. Although it would be nice to be able to check if you are still having the correct exposure or not. You can use a light meter app on your phone to check this though. Simply put in the ISO speed of the film you're using and F8 for aperture. Then check if the app is recommending a shutter speed that is 1 1 25th of a second or faster. Alright, last but not the least, for creativity support, I will have to give the camera 1 star out of 3. The camera doesn't really offer any control over its settings, which makes it very easy to use. On the other hand, this also means that it doesn't offer any freedom for creative experimentation. In a sense, the camera's ease of use becomes its weakness. Take for example the lack of shutter speed control. Some plastic toy cameras like the Diana and Holga cameras have an additional bulb setting. 
This allows you to take long exposure shots at night and be more experimental and creative rather than simply composing than snapping images. The show camera also doesn't let you snap multiple exposures, which is something you could intentionally use to make creative shots. Again, other toy cameras like the Diana and Holga lets you take multiple exposure shots. These cameras take medium format film which are not as accessible and cheap as the more standard 35mm film, however you can load these cameras with 35mm films using adapters. Or you might even find 35mm versions like this Holga 135BC. It has all of the capabilities of the show camera but includes a bulb mode and allows shooting multiple exposure. Or for a bit more money, Lomography offers other, higher-end toy cameras like this Lomography La Sardina camera, which has a bulb and a multiple exposure mode. This isn't to say that the show film camera is lacking in major capabilities though. Again, this camera is meant to give the impression of shooting with the disposable film cameras. For me, it is definitely a step up from the other disposables in regards to build quality and ease of use, and it has all of the capabilities you need to be able to take your everyday photos. It's just that when you want something more creative, then you'll have to look at other cameras. To conclude this review, my overall rating for the Double Film Show Camera is 2 stars out of 3. It's a trendy reusable plastic film camera that fulfills the basic needs of film photography. I think it's for those who like the experience of shooting with disposable film cameras, but want to be a little bit more eco-friendly. If you already have something like the Lomography Simple Use Film Camera, then you probably don't need it. But if you're a collector like me, and you like, you know, something that is better built, easier to use, or just cuter in general, then by all means, buy it. Besides, we all know that film photography isn't the most profitable thing at the moment, which is all the more reason to support companies that are coming up with new film photography related products. Who knows? Maybe it will encourage them to make better products in the future. So, do you already own the Double Film Show camera, or are you thinking about getting it? Well, if you are, I hope that I was able to help you decide even just a little bit. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. If you have any comments, questions, feedback, please leave them on the comment section down below. And that's it for my review. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video, especially if you've reached this far. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, maybe share it with your friends. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers!